Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories concerning the attacks of September the 11th. In my line of work, you got to keep repeating things over and over and over again for the truth to sink in, to kind of catapult the propaganda. Those weapons of mass destruction got to be somewhere. <laughs> nope, no weapons over there. <laughs> Maybe under here. <laughs> the main reason we went into Iraq at the time was we thought he had weapons of mass destruction. It turns out he didn't. What did Iraq have to do with what? The impact on the World Trade Center. <laughs> Nothing. Turns out President George W. Bush was right about Saddam Hussein hiding weapons of mass destruction. When you found out there were no weapons of mass destruction, can you bring me to that moment? Did someone walk in and say, we've stopped looking, they're not no. there? Our enemies are innovative and resourceful, and so are we. They never stop thinking about new ways to harm our country and our people, and neither do we. I just want to ask what your message is to the Iraqi people who are working. You're free. And freedom is beautiful. And, uh, you know, it'll take time to restore chaos and order. But we order out of chaos, but we will. Yeah, John. The idea of putting subliminal messages in the ads is it's ridiculous. Conspiracy theories abound in uh, American politics. Uh, I don't think we need to be subliminal, subliminal messages. I haven't seen any evidence. I, I've seen no evidence to date that said this country could have prevented the attack. No, I know, I know. Well, listen, there's all kinds of speculation. As I said, I have seen no evidence that would have led me to believe that we could have prevented the attacks. And obviously, if we could have, we would have prevented the attacks. Whether you had advanced knowledge of 9-11, do you agree or disagree with the RNC that this kind of rhetoric borders on political hate speech? Yeah. Uh, look, there's time for politics. And, uh, you know, It's time for politics, and uh, I, uh, it's an absurd situation. Never did in anybody's thought process about how to protect America did we ever think that uh, the evildoers would fly not one, but four commercial aircraft into precious U.S. targets. Never. Nobody in our government, at least, and I don't think the prior government that could envision flying airplanes into buildings on such a massive scale. Uh, but that turns out not to be true. U.S. military planners did envision and practice those very scenarios. There were people in the United States who actually were preparing to defend against the kind of attacks which occurred here on 9-11. The North American Aerospace Defense Command, NORAD for short, has been defending the skies over the U.S. and Canada for almost 50 years, 46 to be precise. USA Today reports that in the two years before the attacks on September the 11th, NORAD conducted exercises using hijacked airliners as weapons. And one target was the World Trade Center. Conducted exercises with fighter jets simulating hijacked planes flown into the World Trade Center in the two years before the attacks. Pentagon planners also envisioned the attack on the Pentagon five months before it happened. Air Force officials wanted a war game having a terrorist group hijack a commercial airline and fly it into the Pentagon. We've been preparing for this kind of event for nearly a decade. We looked at this scenario, hijacked aircraft flying into buildings back in the 60s. A couple of months before September 11th, we know that there was a, a, a planning session uh, by NORAD where military officials considered a scenario in which a hijacked foreign commercial airliner flew into the Pentagon months before. NORAD had already in the works plans uh, to simulate in an exercise a simultaneous hijacking of two planes in the United States. Personnel were expecting an exercise that day. We have a hijacked aircraft headed towards New York and we need you guys to we need someone to scramble some F-16s or something up there to help us out. Is this, is this real world or exercise? No, this is not an exercise, not a test. One shocking element coming from the tapes, a hijacking exercise was planned the same day. It's not real world. Real world 
Check. No, this is the real world. I've never seen so much real world stuff happen during an exercise. This is the real world. I guess, and we're trying to confirm this. I think we put the exercise on the hold. What do you think? I hope they cancel the exercise because this is ridiculous. Are they the exercise? Uh, not at this time, no. What we need you to do right now is to terminate all exercise inputs coming in. The question was, we had four war games going on on September 11th, whether or not the activities of the four war games going on on September 11th actually impaired our ability to, to respond to the attacks? Uh, the answer to the question is no, did not impair our response. Did that help in terms of were more people prepared or did this hurt in terms of people thinking, no, there's no possibility uh, that this is real world. We're, we're engaged in an exercise and delay things. Sir, uh, my, my belief is that, uh, is that it helped. We were in the middle of a NORAD exercise at that particular time, asking on the way to my staff, is this part of the exercise? On this morning, they are in the midst of a full-scale training exercise. First thing that went through my mind was, is this part of the exercise? Is this some it's kind of a screw-up? We had multiple aircraft called hijacked all over the country. We got many aircraft calls inbound uh, that morning that turned out to be uh, phantoms. President Bush was quick to use 9-11 to build up his image. At the same time, he is refusing to cooperate fully with the commission investigating the attacks on America. The co-chair of the 9-11 commission itself admits to us that the process he headed up was seriously flawed. So there are all kinds of reasons. We thought we were set up to fail. We got started late. We had a very short time frame. Indeed, we had to get it extended. Uh, we did not have enough money. They were, uh, they were afraid we were going to hang somebody, that we would point the finger. The commission, in many ways, was set up to fail because we had um, not enough money. We didn't have enough time. We'd been appointed by the most partisan people in Washington. Now, I'm a member of the commission. The president has said only a minority of the commission can see a minority of the documents and then they have to clear what they're going to say to the rest of the commission with the White House. It's a scam. It's absolutely disgusting. At least two of those members uh, said uh, that they were set up to fail by the Bush administration. One of them, Max Cleland, resigned citing this is a national scandal. Um, this is pretty extraordinary evidence. In fact, the attorney for the 9-11 Commission, John Farmer, cited that there was a, a decision at some point not to tell the American people the truth. Are there really great secrets that you know that you can't share with people? Yeah. Uh, yeah, there are. Uh, and you never write about them. No. It, maybe at a time in your life that no. you're like, oh, I'm 90, I'm going to do it. No. No, nothing. You were both in Skull and Bones, the secret society. It's so secret we can't talk about what it. What does that mean for America? The conspiracy theorists are going to go wild. I'm sure they are. I don't know. I haven't seen the web. Number 322. <laughs> <laughs> I had, was sitting outside uh, the, the, the classroom waiting to go in, and I saw an airplane hit the tower. Of an, of a t you know, the TV was obviously on, and I, I used to fly myself, and I said, well, there's one terrible pilot. And uh, it said it must have been a, a horrible accident. When we walked in the classroom, uh, I had seen this uh, plane fly into the first building. There was a TV set on. In August of 1998, the intelligence community obtained information that a group of unidentified Arabs planned to fly an explosive-laden plane from a foreign country into the World Trade Center. The intelligence community obtained information that Osama bin Laden's next operation could possibly involve flying an aircraft loaded with explosives.